the movie begins with a provocative pajama party at the Theta Pi sorority house amid hazing rituals. The scene introduces Mrs. Crenshaw, the house mother, and five senior class sisters. Jessica, a self-appointed leader, Ellie, the brainy, awkward sister, Claire, a stunning Asian sister, Chugs, the drinking and jokester stereotype, and Cassidy, our central character, pretty and responsible. In Jessica's room, they toast to their senior year. Jessica shows a live feed of Megan in bed with Chug's brother, Garrett, who has unknowingly been given roofies. Megan starts foaming at the mouth, leading to panic. They decide to prank Garrett, pretending Megan is dead due to the pills. Rushing Megan to the hospital, Claire pretends to get lost, and they head to an abandoned mine near a lakeside. There, they stage Megan's death and create a disturbing scenario to prank Garrett further. Jessica manipulates the situation, suggesting disposing of the body to avoid being implicated in murder. Garrett, distressed, tries to make a call but fails. Jessica proposes getting rid of the body, discussing disturbing methods while filming a prank. In a horrific turn, Garrett accidentally impales Megan with a tool, thinking it would only puncture her lungs. The situation escalates as they try to save Megan, who dies due to the lack of cell phone signal to call for help. A heated argument ensues among the sorority sisters about whether to involve the authorities or cover up the incident. Fear of ruining their lives and prospects versus their sorority's principles and integrity divides them. Ultimately, Jessica manipulates them into concealing the crime to protect themselves and their futures. They dispose of Megan's body down the mineshaft, with Cass having a momentary crisis of conscience. Jessica, manipulating the situation, convinces them to maintain a unified front and deny knowledge of Megan's disappearance. Months later, at graduation, tensions persist among the sisters. Cass feels isolated, especially after Andy's speech on judging people by their associates. The sorority sisters, having made a pact, continue to hide the truth about Megan's demise, preserving their secrets and standing by the fabricated narrative. The tension escalates as the plot unfolds in the movie. Cass and Andy, deeply in love, discuss their plans for the future, intending to leave the sorority behind after the goodbye luncheon. Cass is part of a legacy family, with her mom being a part of Theta Pi. As they attend the luncheon, Jessica, seemingly composed, gives a speech acknowledging the missing sister, Megan. However, a shocking appearance by Megan's sister, Maggie, causes an uproar, leading to Ellie's distress and Jessica's attempt to maintain control. Amidst the chaos, a text message arrives with a chilling image, heightening the fear among the sisters. Chugs heads to her psychiatrist's appointment, which turns into a nightmarish encounter resulting in her demise at the hands of a mysterious killer. As preparations for the party continue, Claire engages in risky behavior, inviting Mickey into the hot tub for a final encounter. Ellie's unease is palpable, raising concerns among the others. Unnerving incidents and revelations, including the discovery of Cass's blood-stained jacket, further unsettle the sisters. Jessica takes charge, rationalizing the events and advocating for tradition despite the eerie happenings. Ellie's suspicions intensify, suggesting Megan might be seeking revenge. Emotions run high as Cass and Claire confront their mistakes, acknowledging the series of misjudgments since the accident. The party kicks off in a frenzy of music and revelry, marked by numerous hooded figures participating in the festivities. Claire navigates a tumultuous encounter with Mickey, while Ellie grapples with her own torment and steels herself against his advances. Meanwhile, a series of confrontations and encounters with the hooded figure escalate, leaving a trail of fear and distress among the partygoers. Jessica, Claire, and Cassidy convene, trying to decipher Ellie's distress. Ellie, traumatized and unable to articulate her fear, directs them to the horrifying scene upstairs. The discovery of a grotesquely manipulated body and a threatening message on their phones heightens the tension, pushing them closer to a perilous confrontation. As the unfolding events veer closer to the night of Megan's death, the sisters confront mounting terror and an imminent confrontation with an unknown killer. The revelation of disturbing messages and the realization that their past actions may have deadly consequences. As tensions reach a boiling point, Jessica hurriedly leaves the party, leaving Kyle suspicious and concerned about the unfolding events. Simultaneously, Cassidy insists that Andy head to his parents' house without her, imploring him to trust her and promising to explain everything in the morning. In her rush to leave, Jessica's reckless driving nearly leads to several accidents. She narrowly avoids hitting parked cars and comes close to running over Maggie, Megan's sister, who appears eerily calm and confrontational. Maggie's unsettling remarks and Jessica's dismissive attitude foreshadow potential trouble. Upon reaching the mineshaft, the group prepares for a possible confrontation, searching the SUV for anything useful. The discovery of a flare gun becomes their only potential means of defense. Upon arrival, they encounter Garrett, whose hands are stained with blood and who appears distressed. Claire, wielding the flare gun, attempts to keep him at bay as tensions escalate. Garrett's frantic state and approach incite fear, prompting Jessica to take drastic action, inadvertently causing his demise. However, upon closer inspection, they discover that Garrett's blood resulted from self-inflicted wounds, raising questions about the events leading up to his tragic end. 
the revelation adds complexity to an already fraught situation, leaving the sisters grappling with the aftermath of their actions and the mystery surrounding the unfolding tragedies. The debate among the sisters intensifies, with Ellie convinced that Megan's spirit seeks retribution while Jessica stands firm in her beliefs. Determined to investigate further, they decide to explore the mineshaft, lowering Cassidy down with a chain and using Garrett's mirror shard for illumination. However, an unexpected accident occurs, causing the chain to snap, resulting in Cassidy's fall. Despite the terrifying turn of events, Cassidy emerges unscathed, but the discovery of a missing body and a blood-written ominous message adds to their fear and confusion. Returning to the sorority house, the aftermath of the abandoned party reveals a chaotic scene with scattered debris and persistent noise emanating from a malfunctioning hot tub. While some speculate on the fate of the attendees, Jessica resolves to find Matt, prompting Cassidy and Ellie to accompany her. However, their attempts to restore peace are interrupted by alarming text messages from Chug's phone, signaling a haunting revelation of her demise. Amidst the unsettling atmosphere, Claire's frantic encounter at the French doors turns into a tragic struggle as she becomes a victim of the unknown assailant. The intense confrontation leads to her demise, witnessed by Cassidy, prompting her to engage in a harrowing battle to rescue Claire, ending in a devastating outcome. Inside the house, the remaining trio encounters Maggie, revealing unsettling news about Kyle's disappearance. A tumultuous confrontation between Jessica and Maggie ensues, escalating into a physical altercation until Crenshaw intervenes, armed and furious. Crenshaw's ominous warning about knowing their deeds prompts a moment of confession from Cassidy, throwing Maggie into further turmoil. As chaos reigns, the sisters, instructed by Crenshaw, seek refuge in Jessica's room, realizing their lack of communication devices. Despite their fear, the sounds of Crenshaw's shotgun provide a semblance of security amidst the escalating uncertainty and danger surrounding them. Downstairs, Crenshaw is searching room by room and encounters the killer in the kitchen. He throws the cross wrench, and she fires. They both miss. While she reloads, he slams into her, impaling her on the cross wrench lodged behind her. In a nearby room, Maggie and the killer meet up. She asks if it's Megan but is answered with a Molotov cocktail, which engulfs the room in flames. Upstairs, Jessica and Cass decide to check Mickey's body for a cell phone to call for help. Ellie hides in the closet. In the East Wing, they find Kyle, dressed in a Greek robe with no shoes on. Cass takes this to mean he is the killer, while Jessica takes this to mean he actually slept with Maggie. He has the fire axe and attacks them. He is apparently pissed that Jessica let all this happen, and, as his girlfriend, it'll reflect badly on him and thus his dad. The girls run to an under-renovation bathroom and find Megan's decomposing corpse hanging in the shower. When they try to escape through the window, they realize the house is on fire. As Jessica checks the bathroom door, Kyle swings the axe, knocking her out. After chopping open the door, his next swing gets the axe caught in the doorpost so Cass runs out. He catches her, but right as he is about to kill her, Andy stabs him in the side of the head. Cass kisses Andy and thanks him. She says she's been checking his location, but he tells her he just put his phone on a Greyhound bus. He wanted to take care of her. She tells him he's the best thing in her life and then she sees the cross wrench in his pocket. She can't believe he's the killer, but he explains that he just wanted to take care of her. He can't believe what the other girls have put her through and wanted them out of her life, and his life, forever. He is hurt she never told him the truth despite all the chances he gave her to. He repeats what he said at graduation, about the company you keep, and says Cass's company was all bitches. Jessica has come to, and comes out of the bathroom. She says Andy is right, and they can just make up a new lie. He throws the cross wrench right into her mouth, killing her and pinning her to wall. Cass says maybe they deserve to die, but all those innocent people. Andy says he has no intention of killing her. He wants to protect their future together. But he had to kill her former friends in case they went crazy or got drunk and told someone. And he had to kill everyone else they told. Cass appears to agree with his logic, until he says all they have to do now is kill Ellie. She says Ellie is harmless, but he says if Ellie told him, she'll eventually tell someone else. Cass lies and tells him Ellie is hiding in the basement. He goes off to find her, and she runs back to Jessica's room. Ellie asks if it's safe, and Cass says it's not and they need to leave. In the hall, Andy lunges in between them. Cass tells Ellie to run. Andy hesitates for a moment but decides to chase after Cassidy. Eventually she knocks him out with the fire extinguisher. She looks for Ellie but finds Maggie instead, cornered by the fire in another room. She tells Maggie to jump over, but Maggie says the fire is too wide and too high. Andy enters. He has the cross wrench again and ties it to a rope. He starts throwing it at the girls, reeling in each time he misses. The boards under Cass give in to the fire when she dodges, and she falls. Her life is saved by Crenshaw's gift bracelet catching on a nail. Underneath her, the level below is engulfed in flames. Andy stands above her, cutting her fingers with the cross wrench, saying how disappointed he is that she'd betray him after he's even killed for her. He tells her this is the end for them and that valedictorian comes from the Latin veil dicer, which means to say. Someone says, farewell asshole. They both look up to see Ellie, who shoots Andy in the chest with Crenshaw's shotgun. He falls back, breaking the floor and falling into the inferno below. 
Ellie helps Cass up and tells Maggie to wrap herself in the thick curtains on the windows behind her. Maggie does so and is able to run through the fire. Before they climb down the scaffold into safety, Cassidy thanks Ellie for coming back to save her. To which Ellie replies, what are sisters for? Months later, the Theta Pi house has been rebuilt, and Greek life is back in full swing as students frolic up and down Sorority Row. The new sisters, including Maggie, are singing a Theta Pi song while gardeners tend the lawn. The camera zooms in on one gardener with slit wrists carrying a sharp tool, it's Garrett. 